Hi, I'm Rose Dunn. I hope you enjoy this brief introduction to a selected aspect of HCCs. Okay, the next concept is our risk adjustment factor. This is the financial driver. Um, let's move into the risk adjustment factor. It's the cumulative value of all of those relative factors and coefficients that we've been talking about. And it has to be based, of course, on an approved provider's documentation. So we know reimbursement is dependent upon coding. Coding is going to be dependent upon the documentation. Documentation is going to be dependent upon the provider. So the best way for us to close that loop is to have a very strong relationship between the coding team and the physician providers in order to get the documentation that's necessary to achieve the highest risk adjustment factor. The risk adjustment factor, as I mentioned, the RAF, is patient-specific. It defines the payment that CMS is going to make to the Medicare Advantage plan or the state will be making to the ACA um, Affordable Care Act plan. There is a denominator. I don't know why they call it a denominator because it's a multiplier, but it's CMS. Well, you can't explain that. Um, so if this is your conversion factor, and for Model 23, it's 9367. Okay, so here is a uh, example of uh, three scenarios. The pink one is where no conditions were coded. The uh, golden one or tan one is where some conditions were coded, and the green one is where all the conditions were coded and there was actually some clinical documentation improvement interaction. So on the pink side, you see that we have a 76-year-old female. Remember, that has a relative factor. That won't change. She's still going to be 76. She's Medicaid eligible, um, so we have a factor for that, and that's not going to change. We have diabetes with complications. It wasn't documented, so we can't code it. Vascular disease, it wasn't specified, so we end up with an unspecified code. Um, and then we have CHF, not documented, so we, we, um, we aren't going to code that either. Um, we can't have a disease interaction because so many things weren't documented, and so we ended up with a RAF of 0.593. On a PMPM, basis for the annual amount, we would have gotten 5,500 for this patient, 5,554. That would be the annual amount. You divide it by 12, and that'll tell you what the payment is per month. On the TAN category, that TAN scenario, we coded it incorrectly. Bad thing, okay? So that dropped down the weight, the coefficient we got for that. The vascular disease is still unspecified, but it still has a weight, so we'll take it. Um, CHF wasn't coded, um, so we now have a RAF of 1.01. .01. Our annual rate would have been 94.61, a nice bump in reimbursement. Divide that by 12, you'll know what you'd get per month. And then on the green side, here we had our CDI interaction, and you see we got the diabetes with complications correctly coded. We got a vascular disease peripheral with complications. That bumped up that uh, weight. The CHF was specified to acute systolic and coded. We got a nice bump there. We have a disease interaction now that we can claim. So our total payment for this patient will be $17,900. Big change based on a number of things, physician documentation, coding accuracy, and clinical documentation intervention. So this risk adjustment factor, unfortunately, resets every year. So that means the board is wiped clean at the stroke of midnight every New Year's Eve for every Medicare Advantage and ACA patient. And on January 1st, they have no HCCs. So that means that we have to regenerate those HCCs for that patient, which means that our providers have to document again, and that means they need to have that visit with the patient. And that only happens if we can get that patient to come back into our offices and be seen, or the hospital and be seen.